everyone. Welcome to edwism.com. We have with us today a very special guest, Ruchi Goel. She is a mom mentor at Edwism and she joined us a year ago. She has been supporting parents um, of children with hearing impairment. Ruchi is a parent of a 17 year old who has hearing impairment, who has been mainstreamed and she has been using speech ther therapy intensively. She has been mentoring parents since 16 years through her blog called Impaired and Empowered. She is here today to support parents with strategies to cope with hearing loss, speech delay and hearing impairment. When a woman has a story to tell, it is surely one of substance. One of her stories is full of hurdles and she overcame them with small wins, big wins. And today she's here with us to share her story and share some strategies. Thank you, Ruchi, for coming on board. Thank you, Anita. It's been an absolute pleasure knowing you as a person and the mission that you have with Edwism. Um, I know that uh, very few people would actually be doing what you're doing. You believe in, uh, in parents and stories which are different. So I'm very, very proud and happy that I'm with Edwism. Um, well, my story has been very, uh, you know, difficult. Uh, a special need parent will always have a, a very different story to tell. Each parent has a different story. And my story is also of lots of tears, lots of crying, lots of sadness, as well as victories, because it's the first five years which are very crucial when you have a child with disabilities or some impairment and these are the golden years of our children so if we find ways to support the child in that because the child's brain is very plastic at that at that point in the first five years so we call it the golden years and if you are able to work with that child in those early years you can see miracles happening i was very lucky um, that prisha when she was born uh, I mean, I'm very talkative anyways, uh, and I love children. Uh, we discovered that uh, she was deaf when she was 10 months old. And we got her, it was really shocking. How do we help out a child with a hearing loss? Because I had never seen, I would, I would see it on television when we were little kids, uh, you know, people using sign language, but I never realized that I would have a child with hearing loss and yeah. all my singing and dancing and, you know, talking to her was literally on deaf ears. Um, so we started to look for answers online, mm -hmm. but there was nothing uh, in those days. Uh, it's way back in 2004. There was nothing much which showed us that in India we have this. Uh, and so I started to ask around if there was any school teacher or somebody who would tell me that deaf children can talk because I was very sure that she should talk. Uh, mm. Depression, sadness, tears, bashing up, you want to kill yourself. You know, it, all these are things that happen to every child who, uh, every parent uh, who has a child with disabilities at that moment because suddenly you feel you know alone and people also are very cautious about how they talk to you right. but eventually that we started to use hearing aids and mm -hmm. the sad part was the audiologist asked us choose your hearing aid and i was like how do i know which hearing aid to choose it's not like you know bindi or you know potatoes yeah. but uh, ruchi what age was this at the hearing aids uh she was about 10 months old when we eventually put hearing aids but our search was on for about two months because she was diagnosed at about seven months so and was then, it like a percentage she was um, she had a hearing loss at a certain percentage or was it all total hearing loss what there is nothing it? called uh, completely deaf you always have residual hearing so mm -hmm. it depends we have like mild moderate and severe to profound so prisha is severe to profound where she hears at 75 to 85 db in one year decibel in one year and the other one is 110 so if i really shout into her right ear which is 75 to 8, 85 dB, uh, she can just about make out sound from no sound. And the other one, she even if there's a helicopter, uh, you know, helicopter next to her ear, she won't be able to she hear it. Hear that. So mm -hmm. that's how bad the hearing loss is. So it right. was very stressful and everybody was cautious. But um, then uh, my husband, he started to look for the best hearing aid. And I, you know, as a parent, you are thinking that 
why should you spend so much of money on a hearing aid you know a hearing aid is a hearing aid but then uh you know we eventually worked out the finances because that was also we had just bought a house and so exactly. you know looking at a 1 lakh hearing aid is a very big amount that you're looking yeah. at um so it was very stressful time for us eventually we did get her hearing aids at 10 months uh my husband really did a lot of research as to what she would be hearing and whether it would be the and we he, we were very sure that we wanted the best hearing for a child yeah we did put the hearing aids and then we were we started speech therapy why speech therapy is important is because unless you perceive because for, for the first time when she was actually wearing hearing aids it's all sound it's yeah. all noise it's so noisy that noisy. and she cannot she has never heard sounds before so mm. for her to make out that that sound is a drilling sound that sound is a, a sound of my uh, you know of, of something falling down or a car she has no idea you have to put that word uh you know the the word with that sound you have to put it together and match them together hmm. so this mother this person who's looking at me is called a mother how will you it's like learning a foreign language now if you go and learn japanese for example yeah. uh you will need to learn everything from scratch yeah but then there's only resources for that right but for what you had to do there were no resources as such at that time so no, nothing uh, even online because we were looking Not online for help there was nothing available mm-hmm. so we started speech therapy and i was going to a speech therapist in pune and i just felt that there was something missing i i just knew it instinctively that this is not going to make my child talk and so and the mother and i knew the time was running i just wanted my daughter to talk and she would tell me don't put the hearing aids for very long because it may damage her hearing and i said why would she say something like that so i would still because i wanted to connect with my child so i would yeah. just put the hearing aid and keep talking but uh, eventually um um uh, we we this i started to talk and we would uh, attend the lessons one yeah. two times a week it was i still remember 150 rupees for one hour and i just felt with this 150 rupees actually i could buy something mm-hmm. and play with her at home much better and i would think i would do a better job than what this speech therapist is doing so uh I was miserable and you know we would just I would just cry uh, you know how what is the future of this child uh, am I going to be learning sign language but then sign language would mean that which sign language and whether uh, it's possible around me and how many people on the streets use sign language yeah. so that was very stressful time for all of us Right. and i it was just a miracle i still remember i was sitting in a temple one day and i just sat down with my both my children and i cried and i just said god show me a way because i know this is not working i need somebody to help me and <laughs> literally if i could say it was like in one of the bollywood movies next morning <laughs> alka ma'am called me up and she said uh, how did she was, how did she get your number and stuff Yes, one day we were at this is the audiologist place. Uh, we had to go for some fitting of her mold. Uh, mm-hmm. Precious, the hearing aid has a mold attached to it, which goes into the ear canal, and that helps her to, uh, you know, the sound to reach the, reach her ears. Um, so, and we were just sitting there looking very depressed. And my husband and I were, we would just look around uh, if there was somebody who was talking. We were constantly looking at people's ears. Yeah. Uh, we were constantly looking at people talking. Anybody who has a hearing loss. and this girl there was this 17 year old who was going on talking 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 and you know she was a, literally like you know shouting at her mother and i just told my husband look she's talking and she's got hearing aids can you just go and ask her what happened how did she manage it and so my husband went to her and this lady uh, the mother of this child she said come outside i was very we were very surprised i kept sitting and my husband went out Mm-hmm. and she uh, gave a number on in his hand and he said call up this lady she is the best and if you can manage to do her speech therapy therapy for 3 years wow you will be done your daughter is sorted but you have to handle her for 3 years it's very difficult so <laughs> my husband said how what is difficult <laughs> what could be difficult but for us at that moment we weren't thinking so we did call her up uh she asked uh, uh she did talk to us found out what was wrong and then she said okay uh i'll arrange a class so that's how we had her number but she took she takes time and she she takes time for a reason 
yeah that she want the parents to be really desperate and wanting to do it because unless a parent is motivated mm-hmm. it's not going to happen yeah so eventually next day we went to her house and i saw these four kids sitting on the mat and she was talking in marathi mm-hmm. and i said this old lady what is she because you have always you know our generation always thought that that wow oh, what will this old lady know you know and she was in her 70s early 70s mm-hmm. then but i saw this all these children were talking and she she just asked me to sit with my baby on the lap mm-hmm. and just keep, keep listening and i was intrigued because i said all these children were like you know singing away talking and they were having so much fun yeah i said if there is one person in this world it is this lady who will make my child talk because when i asked her can i talk to these children's parents she was very open about it mm-hmm. my previous therapist i kept asking her okay this child has a cochlear implant that's a better hearing aid right that's a better it's a surgery so it's it's a it's an implant so she she the child gets better hearing than compared to mine give me the number i want to talk to the parent she would yeah. never give it to me because the What? child wasn't talking and so if i contacted the parent the parent probably would tell me that no the same so plant is not working yeah it yeah. came mm-hmm. so that's the reason uh, and then we started speech therapy twice a week i would sit in alka ma'am's class on the mat every uh, you know for the one one and a half hours she was one of the strictest persons i have ever known at <laughs> you know after having raised two kids uh, you I, she was very firm about her you know speech therapy it yeah. was very very grueling very strong on us because she would just break us down it was literally uh, uh, so it was like a, you know i was in the, back in the army <laughs> when wow. we were being trained uh, but the thing was unless you are pushed to learn something new yeah. you won't put your passion into it mm, and absolutely. the best part uh, was that she asked us to stay in the classroom unlike the other therapist and mm-hmm. the child would be on my lap or you know sitting there but it was me who was being trained trained that's that's important i think uh, for anything right with the if the mother or the father whoever takes over as the caregiver i think needs to be trained as well because even with this the same thing with curriculums if we don't know what our child is studying that curriculum we can't be a good support absolutely and you know the p- parent especially the mother a lot of people have often asked me also why why do you always emphasize on mother because mm-hmm. mother is in those first 5 years the mother is a primary caregiver absolutely and so she is there all the waking hours the emotional bond is very strong mm-hmm. the drive the time the mother can give no one else can give so there mm-hmm. were some mothers who said i will hire somebody who will you know probably learn from you and then you know she will do the same thing for my child but that's just not possible the emotions are missing the kind of you know yeah. language you are using at home the kind of things that you do at home are different okay your household than mine your exposure to the world outside is different than mine so right. the child because the child is with the mother all the time the mother should be aware of using that language constantly so yeah. it's like in the even the fo- like you learn a foreign language the amount of recall the amount of you know drive that you have to have to learn that language is immense you have to keep practicing now with your deaf child you have to expose this child to all these environmental sounds so That's i was basically doing this all my waking hours all her waking hours she would be sitting on the kitchen platform listening to those little tuck tuck sound of the mustard popping or we would go yeah. to the shopping and she would be putting things in the in the bag and i would be telling her how to do it uh, we yeah. would be uh, uh, we, you know we would be outside somewhere and talking about everything that we saw everything that we heard and then recalling this at home all the time so telling it to daddy telling it to dadi telling it to dadu telling it to her brother so there was a lot of repetitions that we were doing right. so it was very intense first 6 years of prisha and me was uh, we were inseparable i was very stern alka yeah. ma'am always wanted that you know if i return to a classroom there were changes in my child yeah so it was very intense, but so worth it 
Yeah, I can imagine that. That's what, that's support that you provided. How did you see that the similar support um, as a review let uh, was provided by your husband and the kids? I mean, your son. So how did they support you supporting Prisha? So initially, it was very tough because you know I ha- was in a very difficult mental state because not all therapists are as driven as I have realized because I've been blogging about it. Uh, yeah. very very soon after because I knew that there was so many few people who had access to such good therapy it's called auditory yeah. verbal therapy um, so I started writing about it on the blog so each time I would you know practice it at home with my with my family sometimes they couldn't understand why I was in such a bad mood because Alka man would push me so hard and then I would be in you know in a state of you know mental distress because I'm trying to get you know, uh, my daughter to listen to something and then I have to train my whole family to, un- uh, you know, the same way and they couldn't understand why would I be, you know, insisting on a certain way because uh, they are not there in the classroom. They don't know what it is all about. Yeah. So what I would do is after each lesson, I would come back home, put my daughter to sleep and then make those notes, <laughs> uh, you know, so that I can read them and reinforce in my brain and then yeah. I would use this with my children uh, with my son and my husband and also tell my friends and you know if I had any social life I would tell everybody that this is how you have to be asking my child you have to slow down let her listen to, if you're asking her a question please wait because most of the time people don't even wait to listen to the child or they give a question and then they wait they don't even wait for an answer they just ask the next question yeah I'm sure. Yeah, so sh- there, there are so many strategies that, you know, so many things that we have to change when a child mm-hmm. has speech delay or has a speech impairment or has, especially if you have hearing loss, because first of all, uh, you know, the child, some like my daughter, I trained her without any lip reading. So I would train her in the dark so that she's not dependent on lip reading because not everybody is going to turn around and talk to her and you know, really make those big lip movements. Yeah. yeah. So, Alka ma'am was like so super. She would like, she said that we have to depend least on uh, gadgets. So, my entire family was also going through the same thing. So, it was hard, but yeah. eventually they imagine. all learned it. Um, they all supported, especially my son. He was like a second dad all the time. <laughs> He would insist that uh, Prisha has to be, you know, listening a certain way. And I think the sibling bond was very important. I made sure that she respected him and she listened to him. So they, she would pull his leg or she would, you know, sing along for him. And he was, he would also support. So that was very important that, in fact, uh, the way a sibling will talk to the, your child, it's, it's very different, right? The sibling bond is very different. And they are Absolutely. conversing in a different way. So that really helped. The whole family actually has to be supporting the child. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mother, If the mother has decided on a certain strategy, uh, she will share it with the family and the family has to listen. Because eventually, okay. she's the one who's interacting the most. She's trying to make a difference. Now, if yeah. we don't support yeah. her, it's her lone journey, which is not fair. True. Very true. What about... Um, how would you say school support? Um, schools can support your uh, a child with hearing difficulty or hearing loss. How can they make it easy for the child to integrate in that school if it's a mainstream? See, for example, now for a child with you know, with how does the hearing aid work? Now, the hearing aid is a gadget. It's basically a microphone or an amplifier. Now, it amplifies all the sounds around. Yeah. Now, in the classroom situation, if everybody is talking loudly, so can you imagine how loud it must be for the child to listen? So mm. first, and in that, if the teacher is trying to talk or somebody from the next, you know, the next bench is trying to talk, yeah. they won't be able to understand anything. So there has to be a lot of, you know, when, when somebody is giving instructions in a classroom, there has to be a quiet in, environment. Yeah. One person talking at a time, plus... If not all, like my daughter can, you know, because it's brain training where like these first five years, we are really training the brain to under, ear is just a passage. The brain Mm. is being trained to hear because that's where the sound perception and comprehension is happening. So 
in in that whole environment the child uh, uh, is trying to listen now some children are dependent on lip reading mm-hmm. so the teacher also has to be turning towards the child now yeah. this hearing aid also has like a one and a half meter radius mm. from behind they wouldn't be able to wow. some of them can't hear so the teacher has to be facing the child the child the, te- the the classroom has to be quiet one person has to be talking which yeah. can be challenging because children are children they don't understand mm-hmm. it awareness is one thing each time i moved her to a classroom i did try try really try not all teachers were open to it i really tried to have an awareness talk where the children understand this in an old, supposing they are on a field the child won't be able to hear as much because you know the the hearing aid uh, cannot catch oh yeah that. cannot go beyond that uh, area and, hmm. and in an open area it hears differently so the loudest pitch is picked up much more so you know it, it it spreads out so it does the sound spread out so it won't be as sharp for the child yeah. so sometimes this is really such a challenge out. yes this is a challenge for her because if she's in the playground and there's a car noise outside so the car is honking and there are 10 cars going she's going to hear that with the hearing yes. my god so so it was and the children also they will just say something and run away and she said mama i didn't hear anything mama what did she say and so i missed out on ah. the playing so the children would isolate they won't mm-hmm. play with her yeah. so this is all these things have to be made aware you know the children have to be made aware they should have a buddy system so you don't have like one person this is what i have uh, you know been mm-hmm. very vocal about that uh, weekly you have one buddy so that ch- every child who buddies up with a child who has a disability or mm-hmm. in a, a hearing loss understands how difficult it is for this child and then there's only not always one child who's responsible for this there are everybody gets to you know empathize and sympathize and you know learn yeah, the difficulties yeah. of having disability i think this is a very good way of inclusion for yeah. for these children and to build up empathy in a community so i'm yeah. very 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 uh, you know vocal about it and this is the reason it. when i started my blog and then i moved to facebook where i'm very active i make these small video clips also to connect better um telling them exactly why it is so important that when you have a child with disabilities uh because now my whole thing has not it's not only about hearing impairment now I'm also talking for the last few years on disabilities and you know inclusion for these children yeah um so yeah. um that's what brought like us together so yes that all, and you know i think the my biggest uh, uh, the best thing was last few years i've been talking very very openly about it and in indonesia i had got a lot of a very positive response because in asia you have more challenges compared to yeah, the western world why is world. that what do you what do you think is the gap and where do we where would we need to fill that yeah it, i'm sure I there's a lot but yes see that the thing is you know the the most the, the problem is like with the hearing aids also now they are getting developed in the western world now mm-hmm. by the time they send out they you know the latest models come down uh to asia but then the programming the you know the technical support that is required to program them uh, yeah. needs a lot of training right okay and then these are these people who are pro- uh, learn these programming are pushed by other companies so there are always it's all it's very very complicated situation because in the west there are certain ethics certain you know not that they are perfectly fine also there but you have to be very very lucky to find an audiologist who is so so driven to support you so uh, i was looking for a hearing aid in indonesia for example they were charging me so much of money almost double because he he was you know it was not everything was not very clean the way he right. was providing plus they didn't have the enough technical support now i in germany I got this audiologist who is sitting down and programming every even to one decibel. So if she says I have vibrations there, he will sit down and do it. But in in India or Asia, they are not able to do that, which is very very sad because it needs a lot of expertise and you have to be staying there with that company for very long. So mm-hmm. somewhere the companies are not able to hold these people. So it's about money. Like you know, wherever mm-hmm. they get more money, they would move. but yeah. every hearing aid is very different and then the la- in the west you get the latest hearing aid which are slowly like passed down like you know 
in Asia, you won't get, you know, it's the, they, they always pass on the ones which are fading out into the south, you know, so oh. towards Asia and things like that. So that also plays a vital part. Uh, I'm hoping things will change, parents are more aware. Yeah. Uh, that the whole idea is parents have to be on top of it. They mm-hmm. have to be questioning, you know, uh, for asking because you're paying money, right? So yeah. you should be able to ask, but we are so afraid to ask them because uh, like I, in my audiologist in Pune, when I asked her that why Prisha is not hearing, yesterday she was hearing, today you did something in mm-hmm. a hearing aid and she yelled at me, though I was paying her, she yelled at me that, you know, who are the audio- who's the audiologist? I said, because I had the, you know, training from a very amazing mentor. She says, yeah. what, how do you know that she's not hearing? I said, the whole idea is, she wears a hearing aid, whatever she hears, she responds, she tells me exactly. Now, if she's not doing it, that means something is wrong with the hearing aid. So if I'm questioning you, what am I doing wrong? So we are afraid to ask because they can program yeah. incorrectly. And this is what has happened with me personally. Oh she programmed it wrong so that I can, my her child doesn't hear, the child doesn't talk. And so I have to move to a cochlear implant. So. This is another big, you know, mess.